Alright and welcome back everyone and in this video we are going to go over interactive components on Figma so that you can actually do a single screen design while still having the interactions present like this and we will do all of these effects and again you have to understand normally if you are not using interactive components such as these and I'm gonna show you how it looks in the final it would take at least four or five screens of this particular one screen the variations of these screens to actually create this effect but with the interactive components on Figma we just need one screen and we can make the components interact with each other when we create them and that is what you are gonna learn today and it's gonna save you a lot of time so let's get into it let's go Right, so for you to understand how interactive components work, you need to understand two concepts very well. One is variance and the other is components. Now on this channel, I have created in-depth videos for both of these concepts and they are going to show right now on top. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do a really quick overview. And if you are already familiar with both of these concepts, just go to the next part of the video. But if you are not, let's get cracking with this part. All right, so let's begin with a small UI element called button. To do that, I'm going to press F. And that's our button. And I'm going to add a fill color of black to this frame. And I'm going to name this frame on the top left small button. And then I'm going to add a text inside of it. Going to say button. And I'm going to auto it and I'm gonna center this with the controls on top right here so that's our button now on Figma when you have normal elements frames they have certain attributes like you can set constraints for their contents etc etc you can change this color but if you want to give it much more powers about systematizing these designs and I'm gonna explain what this means you want to first make sure that they become a component and to show you the difference between a normal frame and a componentized frame I'm just gonna duplicate this button by holding option and dragging what I'm going to now do is I'm gonna make this second button a component with the shortcut option command K on Mac I am gonna do the same dragging to create copies of each the left and the right so I'm gonna press the left one hold option drag press the componentized frame Hold option drag. Now I want you to watch this carefully because on the left side we have a normal frame, on the right side we have a component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the text in the normal button, normal frame button. So you can see the top parent, the initial one, actually text I changed, but nothing happened to its child. Now watch this. Once I change the parent components text, the child also updates. And this makes your designs way easier to scale because you are going to have a lot of elements in various screens that are going to repeat. And you don't want to design each of them if there's a change to one of them. Now, that is your components. The difference between a component and variant is to solve the problem of what if I want the design to scale but also have specific parts of it that are different meaning if I want this button and I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna make this have properties and make it a variant but now I can do is I want this button to while hold some of its attributes I want some of its attributes to have variety meaning like I want this one to be a different color like red and what I can do then is I can set a property on Figma like color and the first one it's gonna be black and the second one gonna be red and then I am gonna let's say let's want, we want to create an instance of this we are gonna look so to get an instance of this variant component I'm going to the assets and then I am gonna drag this button here then I can if I want to in some screens choose the red instance or the black instance so while any change we make to this buttons any change we make to the parent on these parts will actually change the content like this 
we can also have varieties of how we want to show certain attributes being different. Alright, so now that we understand both the variance and components concepts, we can begin learning how to make interactive components. So uh, we are going to begin with a very simple one. And I think we are, I'm going to switch the order here of both of these. We are going to begin with a button. So right now, this is just a simple frame and with the text in it. So it's a normal button. The first thing we have to do is to make it a component. So I'm going to do the same shortcut, Option Command K. So now this is actually a component. And I'm going to now have to make this a variant. To do that, I'm going to click on the properties and variants. And again, to use interactive components, you have to make them a variant. Just having a component will not be enough. And I'm going to show you how it won't be enough. So I'm going to add a second part of the variant. And I'm going to name this property to be hover. So in this part, hover is off. And in this one, the hover will be on. So I'm going to press Shift X to change the color, to switch the filter stroke. And I'm going to make this white. OK. So the, the top is when the hover is off. The second one is when the hover is on. To make this variant into an interactive component, I'm going to go to the prototype parts in the top right here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to click here. And I'm going to drag this handle you see to here. And the difference and the key to tell you are at you are making interactive component is this change to option. You will not, and I repeat, you would not have seen this change to option if what you were working with was just a component. So right now, then also, so what this does is if a user, if a user clicks, well, click is the wrong interaction, so not on click, but mouse enter, if it's if their mouse is hovering on this element, we want to show the second one. And we also have to, you know, we did the mouse entering, we have to now do the mouse leaving to go back to the hover state. So this is again mouse leaving this element. So now it will work. So what I showed you, and I can actually show you how it works here is like this. So I can just show you interactive components here. And I'm going to just remove this one that is normal. And I'm going to show you how it works. And I'm going to play this one, OK? And this is how it works now because we set both of those stages. So Ahmed, can you show me the component part when it would not work? I'm like, yes, I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo my steps here. So I'm going to undo till we have a component, but we don't have a variant yet. So this is a normal component right now. And then I'm going to summon this component. I'm going to detach this instance. And I'm going to make this a component as well. And I'm going to fill this. OK. So I'm going to Shift X to switch. I'm going to hold here, FFF. So now both of these are a component and I want to connect them like I did with when they were variants of each other. So I go to prototype and I do interaction and I show this. So then I show here. The problem is you do not get the change to option that we get when, when we were using variants, which is why Figma doesn't understand that you are actually showing different variations of the component on certain interactions. For what we previously did to work, you cannot have two individual components. They have to be, you have to have a component stack with variants only. It only works when they are variants of each other. Now let's move on to doing this menu part. So we have this menu element and what will happen if the user clicks on this icon, the menu opens. If they click it again or tap it is a better word. They are mobile. If they tap it again, it closes. So we are going to do just like what we did before. First, we have to turn this into a component with our shortcut command option K. Then that is not enough because for us to have interactive components like we talked about, we have to make this a variant as well. So I'm going to go to properties and create a variant. 
Perfect. Then I'm going to click on this plus icon to create the second variation. And I'm going to name the properties of the vari variant to be, let's think of it, menu. And the first one's value is, let's say, on. And the second one will be off. To show that it's off visually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this frame and I'm just going to hide it with the layer here. So boom. So now it's hidden. This is how our variance looks. Now we have to make this an interactive component. So I'm going to go to the top right prototype. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the icon and I'm going to drag this selection here to the whole element and it's going to be on change to, it's going to be when it's clicked, we are going to go to this one. And I'm going to also, we have to do the reverse now because when it's off and the icon is clicked, we are going to show the menu. So I'm just going to go here as well. And this is going to be on click as well. Okay, that is good. So now we have done the two components. We are going to move in the next video to the third one, which is the cart, which is the most complex one. Basically, the user will have options to choose between two cards for that they can actually pay for the product, our imaginary product. And what you see here on the right, each uh, row, we have on the right side the card, and on the left, we have the radio button. But the radio button UI element signals is that you can only pick at most one card. This is very important because this is going to affect how many combinations we have to create for interactive components. So first again, like we did for the previous two designs, we are going to press on Option Command K to make this a component. That is not enough. We have to make this a variant. So I'm going to click on the plus near the properties, variant. And I'm going to name this property to be, I believe, let's say picked. So we can have almost like three options. Where The first is where nothing is picked. The user hasn't tapped any of the cards yet. The second is the first one is picked. And the third is the second one is picked. Those are our only three options. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna create then three variants. Awesome. And I'm gonna space these things apart more. I'm gonna add an auto layout. And I'm gonna make this like 64. Yeah, that helps. So now that you can see the distinct elements better. So now, and I'm going to name this to be picked none. I'm going to name this picked first. I'm going to name this picked second. And being articulate in your, in your variant values is important for your design system because it will be much more easier for the dev to understand what you are doing. So then what I'm going to do to move to the interactive component phase once we are done with the creating of the variants, I'm going to click on prototype and I am going to go here and going to pick the radio button. And if this one is picked, we are going to go here, right? Because we are going to go to the first one. If the second one is picked, we are going to go to the second one. Now we have to go to the design part a bit and maybe change the visuals here a bit. Because I want this, so I want this to be 1818, FFF, yes. And I want this to be centered. The reason what I'm doing right now is so that, so let's see the radio, okay. So that's good. So this is your card choice on click, that's good. And this circle will go to the second part here. So it's going to go around here. Perfect. Okay. Now visually we are done. So again, prototyping. So let's say we are on the first choice. In the first choice, what the user can do is they can only pick the second choice, right? So what we are going to do here is they can go to the... So if they tap here, if the user taps here, they can go to the second choice. And on the second choice, what they can only do is to go tap the first choice. So this has to go back to here. All right, and those are almost all of our interactions. And I think we are ready. So now in the next video, we are gonna put all of these design components into the screen and we are gonna play the prototype.
elements, let's play them. Let's see if we made any mistakes. So I'm just gonna click on here, close, that's good. Pick options, that's good, and hover off. And everything works, and it only took one screen, and this is gonna scale very easily because we are not gonna repeat certain things. Now, thanks so much for watching this video, guys, and I believe it will help you a lot to learn interactive components so you can scale your designs faster so that you don't waste as much time as a UI UX designer. Now, if you like this video and if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button below so that you can get in touch with me when I produce a new video that will help you get better on Figma and become a better UI UX designer. Take care and have an awesome week. See you later. Now, before you go any further, I actually added two videos to the end of this video that I believe will help make you a better UI UX designer on Figma. Please watch either of them if you haven't already. I believe they will improve your design skills a lot.